All right, y'all. Another episode. Uh, I got to get to Charleston, but today we're doing the Queen Maker, right? And some words of wisdom from the great Queen, Princella Queen Maker herself, right? So let's break this down real quick and then uh, we'll be out of here, y'all. All right, uh, let's hear from the uh, Queen Maker herself. Too many of you get caught up in trying to appeal to a man's beauty standards, trying to be attractive to him because they've led you to believe that being attractive is where your value is. All right. Is that true? Is, is what she's saying true? Has this world, particularly the men of this world, led women to believe that their attractiveness is where their value is? I would say I have to agree with her on that one. I have to I have to give her that one. Definitely, definitely. The 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 prevailing uh ideology is that women are only as valuable as their beauty. Now, women's value used to be in the in the um sanctity of the vagina. But in a world like this, there, the the sanctity of magi- of the vagina is is not even <laughs> it's, it's it it doesn't it's, it's hardly ever it's hardly exists anymore, right? <laughs> the only sanctity of the vagina is usually after someone has been through after a, a female has been through uh, a, some things and then they and then they sanctify the vagina if they smart enough to get a cellular cleanse and they clean all of that residue from men out of them and then they say I'm going to uh, make sure that one day somebody gets something that has been sanctified right but most women don't do that most women just move on to the next man no cleanse no nothing still DNA from the other man still in the system somewhere but they just keep moving on right or DNA from multiple men still in a system residue from the you know uh, an ejaculatory episode, right? Still in there somewhere, right? And they're running around with four or five different men's uh, DNA in them that's vibrating at different rates. That's why they have so many headaches. But that's a whole other story. I'm not even going to get into that. Clears, you can't prove that. Yes, we can, but that's not even an issue. We're not going to even go into that right now. We're just talking about, is it true that this world values beauty? It has stepped beyond the sanctity of the... It used to be virtue. Then when virtue was not, then it was the sanctity of the vagina. Now it has progressed to, since we can't, since virtue in a wicked society like this, virtue has no value, right? You're going to be ridiculed for being virtuous, right? You keep your vagina sanctimonious, you're going to be ridiculed for doing that, right? Somebody going to say, not in a, in a world like this, if you're not promiscuous, they're going to say, what's wrong with you, Right? <laughs> This that's what this world's gonna say. What is wrong with you? What's the matter with you? How come you ain't out here ripping it up? And then when you do rip it up, the men are gonna call you a three or four. Women are in a very perplexing situation. Most women are in a very perplexing situation. And don't be halfway attractive. Now you gotta you got, now you got even more scrutiny on top of that. You got the scrutiny of other women on top of that now. So it's just it's it's Women are in a in a real tricky situation, but yes, I'm gonna say that I agree with her on the first point that uh, this world has moved the goalpost once again from the sanctity of the vagina and the virtues to now the value is in the beauty appearance. Okay, y'all, let's keep moving. All they talk about is what a man wants, and everything that they say they want, you jump through hoops to try to appeal to it. Being a American- Okay, so how about this? I don't think this is the situation. Now, this is where the cultural, uh, now we were all on the same page, I mean, different races and cultures, until we get here. I think when we get here, this is where uh, culture comes into play, and now we start seeing, uh, you know, white women break off this way, and uh, Asians break off this way, and the Latinos break off this way, and black women break off their own way. That's my, this is my observation, right? Because 
I think black women are rarely jumping through hoops to try to appeal to a beauty standard that black men have. They're trying to, they, they are constantly in this comp competitive situation with each other. Because if you ask most men, most men would not tell you to get a weave. Most men would not tell you to go get a wig. Most men would not tell you to go get fake eyelashes. Most men would not tell you to do all this stuff, go get BBLs and all that. Most men, most men would tell you, you don't have to do all that. You just find what, what you're working with. Most black men. Most black men, don't. we don't want that stuff. But we have to deal with it because that's what you want to do, right? We have to tell you you look good so that we can get between your legs, right? Yeah, that looks fine. That looks great. We like that, right? We have to tell you that. But we really, if you really ask, if you would take black, most black men and sit them down in a room and say, your girlfriend or your wife's not going to see this, what do you really think about wigs and weaves and all that? Most of them would say, they don't need that. It's totally unnecessary. It's a waste of money for the black woman to do that. For most black women, it's just a waste of money. It's really so, it's really them competing with each other because I, you rarely hear a black man say, hey, go get you a weave. I, I don't see that. I see black women saying, oh, look at her weave. Okay, I'm going to go get a weave. I'm going to get a better weave. I'm going to get a better wig. And I'm gonna get and they compete with themselves. And then the excuse they use a lot of times is, well, y'all want it. Like, y'all want us to be that way. No, we don't. Not not, not good. Well, let me put it like this. Not good black men. Now, if you're looking for dudes that want to just uh, put you through the ringer, yeah, those dudes are always going to be there. And they, they, they probably just, you know, they just want to smash. They don't really care what you look like. As long as you, as long as you let them smash. They really ain't gonna care, right? But I'm always talking from the position of a good dude, a good dude, a dude that's trying to looking for a wife, wants to start a, start his own family, um, produce heirs, and leave those heirs assets to grow and uh, try to create generational wealth. Those are the guys I'm looking for, not the guys that are just looking to smash. And then when they die, they die alone. And they give Uncle Sam the dragon that they complain all their life complaining about. They give that dragon all their money, right? Uncle Sam comes rushing right in and takes all their money because they don't have no kids. They don't have no. They have nothing. So Uncle Sam gets the whole caboodle, right? <laughs> they, they end up feeding the dra feeding the dragon that they complain. They spent their whole life complaining about, right? Anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's get back to. Uh, the queen maker, she says, you try to jump through hoops. Now, that's what I'm going to say about that. If that's true, if that was true, more women would not be doing, more black women would not be getting the weaves and the, um, and, and the, I don't think it would be as prevalent. It might still be happening. I don't know. I mean, I can't say every black woman would do it, but I'm just saying it wouldn't be as prevalent because there's lots of many different looks. Okay, so some black women gonna have weave, some black women gonna have a weave, whatever, right? But it shouldn't be the standard, right? If you look at the most black women today, the wig and the weave is the standard. I don't think it should be the standard for black women. But you know what do I know, right? <laughs> anyway, anyway, uh, I don't think. I, I, and it's my it's my best understanding that black women do not listen to what black men want. They don't care what you want. They're going to produce what they, they're going to produce a product that you don't want, and then they're going to shame you into buying it. Right? <laughs> it's it's the craziest thing ever. Right? You're going to produce a product that somebody doesn't want, and then you're going to shame them into buying it. No. How about you produce a product that the that the buyers want? Right, if if somebody wants a truck, you can't sell them a stingray. It's not gonna work. They don't want a stingray. They got stuff they got to do on a ranch. They need a truck. Why do I need a, a, a Corvette when when I got stuff to do on this ranch? Right. But then the thing is, 
you might be such a good salesperson. The person might buy the Corvette. But guess what they're going to do? As soon as they get enough money, as soon as they get a chance and an opportunity, they're going to go right around that Corvette and go get a truck. <laughs> they're going to have a truck on the side. Because <laughs> people are going to do what they really want. People only do three things. Remember this. Write this down. People do three things. They do what they want. If they want to do something bad enough, they'll do it. They do what they want. They do what they forced to do. If they forced to do something, they'll do it. If they're forced, if there's, if they have some type of issue that will force them to do it, meaning that there is an issue that if they don't do it, if they don't do what's on the what's being asked, then the uh, the 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 um, repercussions is far greater than the effort in just doing it. That's two reasons. The third reason, the third and final reason that people do stuff is because there is a humongously compelling reason to do it. They may have some moral thinking process that that not forces them but but compels them to do something right it's you know you ain't forced to do it you don't really want to do it but it's something compelling you to do it's a compelling reason to do it those are only three things that re the, the, the reasons why people do things this is why marriages don't work a lot of times because one of these three things is not being met or, or, or so, you know, it has to be, at least one of those things has to be met. If one of those things is not met, your man, it's not, your relationship's not going to work. Because when you, the honeymoon phase is going to wear off and then you're going to be building a life together. And building a life with somebody is going to be challenging. You start to live with them. You start to pay bills with them. You start to eat with them. You know what I mean? The fun times get shorter and the 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 business times get bigger, right? And before you know it, you're sitting with the business person instead of the relationship person, right? <laughs> Uh, Clarence, here you go again, man. You just talking and talking and talking. I know. I know y'all will catch up in about 20 years. Y'all will catch up. Y'all will say, oh, gosh, man. I see what he was talking about now. Y'all will catch up in about 20 years. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Uh, yeah, those are three reasons that people do stuff. So marriages don't work out and relationships don't work out because you don't have one of those things you don't have you do not have at least one of those three things working at the you know as far as in the situation to uh make the thing better so when a challenge comes a challenge comes meaning that okay we're doing something and we're not being we're not able to accomplish what we're trying to accomplish correctly okay something's got to change here right we got to spend more time together or whatever, right? But if that's not a compelling enough reason for one of the people, for, for at least one of the people, or, or both of them, excuse me, if that's not competitive for, compelling enough for both people, you got to have a compelling reason. You got to be either, you got to have a compelling reason, you got to be forced to do it, or you got to have the desire to do it. It's so great that it over trumps the, the pain and anguish is going to cost you to get it done, right? You want to have a muscle-bound body, right? You got That desire has to be greater than the pain that you're going to feel when you're lifting those weights. If you want your marriage to succeed when somebody messes up and somebody does something wrong, shouldn't nobody do nothing wrong, Clarence? We gonna be we you, we were we in a marriage. We married for thirty years, fifty years, twenty years. It shouldn't be nobody gonna do nothing wrong. Are you crazy? You think in twenty years you're not gonna have a misunderstanding? You think in twenty years you're not gonna have something 
go wrong? You think in 20 years somebody's not going to make a mistake and spend all the money? You think in 20 years you're not going to have a problem with somebody didn't pay a bill and the, and you turned on the power and the power went out? You got to wait till, all the way to the uh, Monday morning to scratch scratch up enough money to go f- turn the electricity back on? You think none of that stuff is going to happen in a marriage? <laughs> Something. It may not be those exact things, but there's always going to be a challenge. There's always going to be a challenge in in long term relationships. There's always a chal- There's always challenges there, and they always coming. That's the whole point. The point is you ain't go- you gonna always be happy. The point is you always committed, and that's what people think. See, m- people get married for, for happiness instead of commitment. You marry because. You want to commit to this person, and you committing yourself to the, uh, this family, just the same as this person is committing to the to the family. Now we both got a compelling reason to try to make this thing work, right? But if one person got one foot out of the situation, they don't they're not compelled to try and make it work because they already got something else going on the side. <laughs> But that's a whole nother conversation. That's a whole nother conversation. Get let's get back to the Queen Maker. The Queen Maker says that women are appealing, trying to appeal to men and trying to do all this stuff for men. I disagree in the beauty department. I disagree. I think it's more of competitiveness that they have that they display uh, with each other as opposed to doing what men want. Because I I'm telling you, if you ask ten men, ten black men, do you would you prefer the weaves? Or the wigs, I would say at least eight of them would say no. So you're not doing it for us. You're doing it for some other reason. And I suspect it's the competition, it's the inner competition. But anyway, let's continue. Let's continue because there's more words of wisdom here. Marrying it on a string. There is a difference between attraction and value. And far too many of you think attraction is equal to value. Correct. Now, she's correct on that one. I got to give her that one. She's correct on that one. All right. Do I have any applause here? <laughs> yeah, she's correct on that one. I'll give her that one. I'll give her that one. She's correct on that one. Now, why am I saying she's correct on that? Why is she correct, Clarence? Because a lot of women think that just because of their looks, that's going to afford them this this um, forever uh, ability to attract men, attract a certain caliber of man. And they don't realize as age goes up, the caliber of men is going to go down. That's going to be wanting to start a family. Now, well, so here's what a lot of women say a lot. I still get men. I still get men to go out, come after me. I still get men. I don't have no problem getting no man. Of course you don't, because they just want to smash. You don't have no man that wants to build no life around. Not excuse me, not all women, but the majority of women that say that. And I don't care what. Now we're going back to generalizing everybody, not just black women, but generalizing women. Period. They have this this thinking process that says, well, it's because of my looks. I'm always going to be able to attract a man of a certain caliber, which is just not the case unless you do it. You you doing it with purpose. You're not going to be at the club. You're not going to be at the bar, and that kind of dude is going to roll up on you and want to marry you. Yeah, a dude like that might be because those dudes, good dudes in the bars too. Yeah, they looking, but they here they there to hunt, not there looking for wives. When they go looking for wives, they go someplace else looking for wives. They don't go to the bar and the club looking for wife. But the plan of some women is, I'm going to convert this. They're going to they have the conversion method. I'm going to convert this person from looking at me as a 304 into a, a wife. Right? I'm going to sell somebody that's looking for a truck. I'm going to sell them a Pinto with new paint on it. <laughs> No, 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 no. You have to sell the man looking for a truck. A truck. That means if you want to be seen by men that are looking to looking for wives, then you have to appear like a wife, and then he will notice you and say, ah, 
this woman might, she, she's on my radar here. Right? But women mistake, you know, attra now attraction, let me, let me clear something up. There's attraction, there's arousal. Those are two separate things. Those are two separate things. Attraction versus arousal, those are two, two separate things. You can be attracted to a person. Attraction is spiritual. That's a spiritual thing, right? Right? Jesus said, in my father's house, there is no male or female. There is no male or female. Why? Because it's spiritual. This is a spiritual thing. That's why you can be attracted to somebody on a spiritual level. Even the same sex. But now, are you around sexually? About no, because you're not into that. But you can be attracted to someone. You can be attracted to a female. You can be attracted to a male. Right? You can be attracted to the spirit that they move in. Yeah. Y'all will get that one in about 10 years. Right? <laughs> right? You can be attracted to the spirit they move in. But women mistake attraction, excuse me, arousal for attraction. Um, they, they, not only women, excuse me, men, men definitely make the mistake of saying, I'm attracted to you. Are you really? Because if you're attracted to the person, then you're attracted to them. But what the man is really saying is, I'm sexually aroused by you. I'm sexually aroused when I see you. That's what they really saying. But they're using the word attraction. If you're attracted to something, you're attracted to, you have the spirit, and your spirit and their spirit has enough uh, opposing uh, vibration that attracts each other together uh, electrically. Right? You have a charge that's moving in certain, and they have a charge moving in certain way, and they have, you have just enough polarity where... You guys are attracted spiritually. You ain't hearing me though, but I'm, we we gonna we gonna break it down. We gonna break it down, man. We breaking it down. All right. So Queen Maker says, "Hey, look, man. You think your value is in your attraction? I agree with her on that. When your value is not in your attraction, excuse me, your value is in your attraction. It's just not in your sexual arousal ability to create sexual tension. See, women think, hey, man, I'm." If I can create more sexual tension in this person, then I will get more attention from other from guys. You will. You will. But you're only going to get attention from guys looking for certain things. Because I get good guys that want to have sex with me too. I know they want to have sex with you. How many of them getting on their knee or going to, your, going to meet your family and telling your father that they're very interested in uh, making you their wife? How many times is that happening? Come on now. See, we got to be, we got to tell the truth out here. See, the problem is, and a lot of, and the reason why so many women, and all I'm trying to do is cut down on the number of women that have unfortunately have to go through uh, situations where they have to run into so many frogs and never meet a prince. And I'm saying the reason why you're meeting so many frogs is you're going to the pond. If you want to meet a prince, go to the castle. The princess is going to, the prince, that a prince is going to be at the place, at the castles. If you always around the ponds, that's where you're going to find pond scum at the pond. You ain't going to find pond scum in the castle. You're going to find princes in the castle. Kings in the castle. You ain't hearing me though. You ain't hearing me, right? Cause, cause this world has taught you like this lady's telling you. He, they taught you that you go first. You sexually attract. First, you sexually arouse a man. Then you use the conversion method on him to try to convert his mentality. When he already saw you as a three hundred four because of the way you, because you turned on the sexual. Uh, tension so high already he saw he 
in his mind, he just want to smash you. Um, that, unfortunately, <laughs> now he now you have to convert in your mind the picture of you in his mind from a three hundred four to wi- wifey material. And you already put yourself behind the eight ball because you thought that a sexually charged, sexual being sexually charged in the beginning it is is that's the way to go. Instead of having some real conversation with the man and showing the man that you got virtue, you got heart, you got you 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 are a woman by displaying that to the man in conversation and in action. Right, but instead, what do a lot of women display? I'm strong. I'm strong. I'm strong. I got a degree. Right. I'm strong. I'm smart. I'm smart. Okay. See, the smart women, you ain't hearing from them, right? The women with husbands and the women that's in happy relationships. They ain't got time to be on YouTube telling you about what's going on. <laughs> Only the people that get uh, uh, slam dunked and uh, rejected and uh, dejected are out here talking. Women that are in good relationships, man, they ain't got time to get on the YouTube. They ain't got time for it. That's the problem. But you you think everybody is in the same situation as you. They're not. Well, I don't see nobody talking about good men. That's because the people with good men ain't on me, ain't on YouTube. They ain't got time to be on YouTube. Right? Know why? Because birds of a feather flock together. And if, if, if somebody's in a good relationship and they start hanging out on YouTube with all the people that's in bad relationships that, that cannot sexually select, they're incompetent at sexually selecting, guess, the, guess what? They're going to start rubbing off on you. Next thing you know, you talking crazy to your man. You ain't cooking dinner. You ain't keeping the house clean. You ain't on your job, whatever that is. Right? You ain't doing the things that make your relationship work. Because you listening to somebody else tell you how to how to have a relationship, right? All they going to do is talk you into being single, right? <laughs> My wife, <laughs> my wife was one time. Uh, she was telling me about what it, one of her sisters was telling me, telling her that she should do f- to me. I said, "You go and listen to that if you want to, but make sure she got some room for you if, if things don't work out. <laughs> make sure she got some room for you if, if things don't work out. Because <laughs> all there's an old saying: misery loves." company right and jealousy runs throughout right so if you if if they see you in a good situation pretty soon they're gonna be giving you advice you got some friends that's not in always in bad relationship pretty soon they're gonna be giving you girl i wouldn't take that he told you what to do i wouldn't take that i don't let nobody tell me what to do all you hear in the background is cat. Meow, 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 meow. Girl, I got to feed my cats. So I'll talk to you later. <laughs> anyway, you had uh, the Queen Maker says that uh, the Queen Maker says that uh, that uh, women are mistaken attraction for value, and I agree. Agree. There's very little value in in, in attraction. Well, I don't say very little, but there's. The, tr- the value that's in your physical appearance is, uh, what's the word I want to use? It has a it, it has a it has an expiration date on that, right? What do you mean? Well, you know, definitely you want people to look at your wife and see you as a re- you reflected, right? You want they want to look at your wife and say, oh, okay, I can see why he picked her. Yeah, man, she's she's pretty. You know what I mean? She's she's good looking. Or they hear you talking, they say, "Oh yeah, man, she sounds like she got sense." They don't want to. You don't want to bring your wife to the company picnic. Yeah, bro. Give me one of them sausages, bro. Just throw it right here on my paper plate, bro. Right. Your wife is a reflection of you. 
just like your husband is a reflection of you, right? Your husband is a reflection of you, right? You don't want to bring your husband to a oh, the wedding. We got to go to a wedding. Oh, okay. Husband go to a wedding. He's a mechanic. He got dirt all in between his fingernails. Got a dirty shirt on. He's smelling like uh, yesterday's T-shirt. Right? No, we're a reflection of each other. So to out of respect for each other, we're going to try to always show the world how much respect we have for each other. And in that and doing that, we're showing each other the utmost respect. Wherein uh in today's society, I think many women don't look at it that way. Many women look at it as I don't have to uh, they don't they they don't uh, appreciate the value or or the the the, the perception that men have when you know because first thing you want to do if you don't come man people are going to be looking at your wife they looking at your wife to see what kind of what kind of person in their right mind want to spend their life with you right <laughs> and then if their wife comes out and she's you know. Uh, cute, and then she's, you know, uh, can make a complete sentence, and she sounds like she got some brain power. People, man, they might they look at you different. They say something about this dude, man. But if your wife comes out there looking like a stooge, man, oh, embarrassing you, Clarence, 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 get over here, Clarence, come here, Clarence, I'm hungry, Clarence, right? You got somebody like that out there, man, you're going to be like, your boss, your boss gonna look at you like, man. What is what is what is your wife show to your your coworkers? What does your wife show to your company? What is it to people that might even be thinking about promoting you? What does your wife show to them? The type of woman that you select shows the competency you have in um uh um uh, uh, uh dealing with people, right? Because this is the most serious decision you ever had to make in your life is who you're going to spend the rest of your life with. So when a person see, they say, oh, wow, well, okay, he made a good decision on that. Maybe we can use him here. Maybe we can use him in another, you know, capacity, right? But when they look at your spouse and they say, man, that's who they chose? Uh, no, nah, I like them, but you know what? <laughs> if that if they can make that kind of serious mistake on the person that they gonna spend the rest of their life with, uh, <laughs> uh, we got people's jobs on, at stake here, man. We can't we can't play. <laughs> we got people's jobs. We got hundreds of people's jobs at stake. We can't have a person that's making those kind of de- making that kind of mental faux pas out here. We can't get him the keys to the company. Nah. Anyway, anyway, women, your value is in your virtues. That's what your real value is in, your virtues. And uh, your virtues uh, emanate from how you do everything. It shows in how you do everything, right? How you talk, how you walk, how you vibrate, how you sit next to, how you sit down, how you stand up, how you communicate. It shows on everything. And if you see, you in women in a, in, a, in a, you outnumbered. You you're totally outnumbered in a situation where you are not going to you are just all you're gonna do is be able to get sex in this in the marketplace that women have altered it. You did a lot of things to alter it. One of the things you did is you now you have made music you have listened to people like Mary J. Blige, um, Mary J. Blige, and others like similar like that, that are such so, that have shown their sexual selecting incompetence by selecting frogs and then saying that oh, it's the market that's it's it's the ponds that are messed up. Not yeah, if you go to the ponds to select princes. You're gonna only find frogs in the ponds. You have to go to the castle. But see, they say, oh man, there ain't no princes out there. No, they're not no, there never gonna be no princes 
at the ponds. If the prince stops at the pond, he's only looking to, you know, <laughs> wet his whistle, as they say, right? <laughs> right? But unfortunately, y'all altered the dating market by listening to people like Mary J. Blige and others that told you to just walk away from relationships, not because you were getting abused, which I agree with you should walk away from that, not because uh, there was a, you know, not not because there was some type of a, a, a serious issue uh, that came up like a, you know, some type of uh, incarceration, long-term incarceration or something like that, or some type of, uh, you know, a criminal case or something like that. But, but, I mean, they just walking away because it's difficult, because of the difficulty in being in a relationship, right? You want to marry, sometimes you're going to cry. You're in a long-term relationship, sometimes you're going to cry. Sometimes you're going, somebody's going to do something and you can't believe they actually did that. You say to yourself, man, I didn't even see that coming. I didn't even see that coming. But why didn't you see it coming? Because you didn't pay attention to the breadcrumbs. The person left breadcrumbs, usually, typically, 99.9% .9 of the time, the person leaves breadcrumbs. But you know what we do? We say, ah. They say something crazy, we be like, what? And then they say something real quick to cover that up, and you like, I'm tripping, you know, I, I'm tripping. 